Welcome to a special edition of the Adipose and Luos Destructs tutorials. Today we're looking at our level, so if you haven't played it yet, turn this off, turn on the PS3 and uh, go and play it. This was an old level that I released a few months ago that we um, adapted a lot, improved the visuals a lot and the gameplay and we want to show you how we did it. This is the old level and now have a look how it changes. And this is the new level. This is the old. Note how flat it looks with just a border. This is the new. We've got a forest above it and various other uh, bits of background as well. This is the old. And this is the new. Same gameplay, but a lot more decoration. Looks a lot more like a forest. This is the old. Uh, we're inside a cave here. And this is the new. Note uh, lighting and stickers and a whole new front layer there. This is the old, this is a puzzle, very flat looking, and this is the new, a puzzle carved into the side of a mountain. I really want to encourage you to experiment with the decorations on your level, because there really is always options. This level started out very flat, quite bland, um, a lot of stuff on the front layer, and I wasn't using uh, the other uh, six layers much at all. So do experiment, see what you can come up with, look at other people's levels, and see what they've done too. This is the old. Look at those dark uh, brown platforms that we're standing on at the moment and then look how they changed into uh, creatures with uh, lights and LEDs and lanterns. This is the old. This was a, a journey up an elevator taking you out of the tree. Look at that big empty space there with nothing going on. Look at the squareness of that uh, landing area. And this is the new. Got a moving caterpillar on the left there, a lot more going on. Uh, no squareness to that landing zone there, and a lot more stickers. Look at that landing platform there, just a platform sitting out in space. And this is the new. Um, again, look far more decorated and with a lot more shapes. This is the old, the treetop run, just leaves in the sky, and this is the new. We added clouds, sunbeams, and so on. A lot of our level, um, as it's based uh, in a wood, is obviously uh, includes trees. So we're going to show you uh, some good forest techniques. We're starting off with the, uh, the semicircle shape, and we are working on the front layer, and we're adding in um, some trunks. And now we're putting some on the back layer. I've sped this up, and now we're putting some on the middle layer, uh, which we're going to pull out with the with the corner. Um, edit tool there. So we've got a whole load of trees which will be have various trunks, some on the back thin layer, some on the front thin layer and some on one of the middle thin layers which means that the user will be running behind some and running in front of others as you can see me there doing so. Add a bit of lighting on, add a nice background to give it that foresty feel and then to stop them just being sticks uh, we're going to pull it out with the corner edit tool making those shapes a bit more complex. Don't worry about the fact that the trees have no tops because the player will, will never see them, so there's no reason to put the tops there. A nice little trick here, using the back thin layer and the front thin layer, is just add on some little semicircles of green or brown or whatever your, uh, your deco main decoration colour is. It kind of gives the impression that the ground um, has plants coming out of it, that there's little kind of hills in the background and the front, and again just adds even more depth to the scene. Do you remember this sticker from the cave tutorial? We do use this sticker a lot. Um, gives us a fantastic leaf effect there. But if you fancy making an original um, forest, you might want to try this technique. This is using custom stickers. Um, we've got a, uh, a blank piece of material, and we're going to stick some, I think they're little rabbit stickers, onto it to create a new texture. Experiment yourselves and uh, come up with your own ideas. We're going to photograph uh, that uh, rather bizarre object we've just made and that photograph is going to become the trunks of our new trees. So we made a bit of dissolve and we've stuck that picture to it. Don't worry about what was at the edge because all you see is is that is that trunk in the middle and uh, we've copied that shape over and over and over and over onto all of the thin layers. Uh, we're going to stick them down, add uh, some tree uh, leaves at the top uh, using the circle 
and we've got um, a very different looking wood. So depending on the location of your level uh, will obviously affect the kind of trees that you want. And if you can use custom stickers, uh, you get in a very original looking wood as well. And you can see us there running throughout this uh, rather exotic dark uh, wood. Obviously, depending on your level, you might want to space out your trees more and have make it uh, sparse. We're showing you a rather thick version today. But supposing you just want one tree and you actually want uh, your character to climb up in it, you're going to want something a lot thicker. So uh, we're going to start off with dark wood here and we're going to start kind of pulling a tree shape out of it. We're using the uh, a square shape to begin with and we're just pulling branches out the side. Um, I often find when uh, when making these uh, kind of objects is that I'm kind of like, well, what shape do I actually make? I know I want a tree, but uh, you know, wh which bits do I pull in and which bits do I pull out? I suggest that you actually look at a photograph of a tree. You know, look at the shapes that or, that you want to make on photographs, Google Images, and try and replicate them as much as possible. This is a nice technique here. We're putting the uh, the leaves at the top. We put two green squares. Uh, sorry, two green circles. I apologise. And then we're going to put a and a circle of a completely different material and then change that material back to the first one. And that actually gives us um, a line in the material, a division, um, which gives the texture uh, more interest again. We're going to put some roots on at the bottom of the tree, working on one layer with the, uh, with the uh, octagon shape. And using the corner edit tool, we're going to pull out some roots with some gaps at the bottom and make it sprawling out a little bit corner edit tool I hope you've discovered by now is probably the most important tool you have in terms of creation uh, almost every shape you make should then get kind of pulled around a little bit we're going to stick some uh, extra layers uh, on the front here to give our tree uh, yet more depth don't forget to stick these on before you unpause unless you want to make these a, a, a thicker shape here's the technique I showed you earlier put some circles in of a different material and then change them back to the first one and you get extra lines in the material uh, which is a technique you can use on any style of level from space to a factory to, to the forest that we're working on. You might of course find this tree a little bit familiar because there's the MM tree on the right and there's our tree on the left um, looking very similar uh, indeed but you could make yourself an entire forest of those kind of trees. This is a puzzle uh, from the, uh, our level which we have released. Please go and play it if you haven't already. And we're going to show you how we adapted it from being something rather simple and flat to something a lot more complex. We're putting a sheet of glass over the front of the whole puzzle. Why glass? Because, well, we can see through it. We can still see the puzzle behind. And then we're cutting holes in the material. Um, and we know where to cut the holes because we can see through it. So now when we've changed it back to rock, um, We've, we've got those holes in the right place. Turning the front layer to glass to see through it is a very useful technique on any kind of level um, because you can material change as much as you like. Um, so if you're ever looking for a switch or a bit of logic or a, an object, just turn the front layers to glass and look through. You can see here uh, we've uh, added on stickers to the front. We've used the corner edit tool to make it um, a lot more jagged and we're adding uh, a back layer of rock and using the techniques I showed you uh, earlier in the forest tutorial we've added some semicircles of green on the thin layers at the front and the back. We're pulling out uh, the existing objects which are very bland into more jagged rock faces and you can see it's uh, looking a lot more interesting now. It's no longer a puzzle floating in space, it's now part of a mountain. Now don't forget the difference between stickers and decorations. Decorations are 3D and they move, stickers um, are flat. And often you can use them in combination uh, to get the colour of the sticker and the background of the sticker with the movement um, of the decoration. If you wanted something a little bit more crazy, uh, you could actually uh, create an entire tree using the techniques from earlier in this video. Um, and put your puzzle in that. So hopefully we've given you a load of different ideas here. On, on how to create foliage and trees for use in your level. I'm going to finish part one by uh, showing you the first half of the trailer for our level. You can watch the, uh, the entire trailer on my YouTube channel. We've been working on this level for a while now and we'd appreciate your support, uh, especially if you've been uh, watching and enjoying the rest of our tutorials. Um, it'd be great if you could play the level and if you, uh, if you feel that it's worthy, please give it some uh, 
a nice amount of stars and maybe send us some hearts our way as well. In part two of this video, I'm going to be showing you um, the logic uh, behind In Pursuit of the Meddling Magpie, and hopefully I'll show you uh, some techniques that you didn't know there too. So I'll see you in part two. Bye-bye.